Hello everyone, I'm Jonas and today I will be going back in time to do a video on one of my favorite games of the PS2 era, Shadow Hearts from the New World. Um, there were actually two other Shadow Hearts games. Um, I think from the New World is the f last one. Um, unfortunately they didn't make any more because as I said this is one of my favorite games and I'd really prefer if they made more of these instead of making more shitty Final Fantasies that kind of grew worse as time progressed. Final Fantasy X was another one of my favorite PS2 games, but um, it was not without its flaws, um, to say the least. And this game is better in several ways. For instance, there is no Blitzball, you can skip cutscenes, and it doesn't have Titus in it. So let's get on with the video. Um, unfortunately, you're still a angsty teenage boy, in this case Johnny Garland, and you're sort of running around and exploring different locations in the world. Um, in this case, I'm just running around, picking some stuff up, finding a chest. So the sort of basic layout is the same as Final Fantasy, except that the world um, the world sort of isn't connected, it's just different locations and you don't run between them, you just, once you reach the end of uh, an area, you're sort of uh, taken to a world map where you can teleport to the other locations. Obviously there are bigger rooms that have uh, sort of different splits. But the game switches between um, sort of this uh, detective stuff, because this Johnny guy is a detective for some reason, I have no idea why. Um, but yeah, so you sort of run around talking to people to unlock new locations and stuff like that. And the other uh, part of the game is running around in sort of dungeon areas. Um, the game here is the world map. So you can see you just get a new location and you go there. And you talk to some people to unlock uh, the theater at the end here. Uh, but yeah, so the other part is dungeons. and there's sort of a mix between random encounters and um, oh yeah, I ran up to the door to try and interact with it, but you have to talk to this guy for, first. Um, so yeah, it's a mix between um, random encounters and sort of scripted, I suppose, uh, encounters where you can see the enemies in advance in some cases, and in some cases you're just sort of taken to the battle screen, so they might just as well be random. Um, so here is the, it's the sort of first dungeon and it doesn't actually have any uh, encounters, uh, any random encounters until you come back to it. Uh, but here is sort of one of the secret treasures or whatever you want to call it. Um, the game uses fixed camera locations, meaning that they sort of tend to hide things that you can't look out, like uh, behind corners and uh, stuff like that. But as soon as you come close to anything, the question, question mark uh, shows up above your head. Uh, but yeah, the basic part of what makes this game great is the combat system. Um, obviously, since most of the gameplay is done in combat, uh, the combat system is one of the central parts. and this game has one that is much better than the Final Fantasy one, at least in my opinion. Um, you have your standard attacks, which there are four different ones. Um, you have your second bar, which is different for each character. They all have different uh, specials, whatever you want to call it. Then there is Stellar Magic, uh, which I will get back to later. Uh, but everyone has one of these, uh, well, all but one character. And then you have items, and then there's sort of escape and defend and things like that, which you rarely use. Um, so the basic attack is this. Once you select your attack, you're taken to the judgment ring, which is sort of a timing minigame. The line goes down and you click it. Um, so the, the basic orange part is just a standard attack, and the red part lets you do a bit more damage. Uh, let's say 20% something. Um, the amount isn't that important. Then you also have a chance to 
crit and things like that, which is, as far as I can tell, random, and you can't really affect it in any other way. Um, so if you're just doing basic combat, it's basically just all of this over and over again. Um, but different attacks have different um, different judgment rings, and all of the sort of um, crowd control or whatever you want to call it, sort of stun effects, affect how the um, how the uh, ring spins, like if it's big or small, how fast the ring goes, or the line goes, um, sometimes it's in reverse. So there are a ton of cool sort of, um, instead of just having stunts that say you can't do anything, you have these uh, things that actually impact gameplay, which I think is really cool design. Um, and yeah, the rest of it is a lot like fan fantasy, like I said. Here you have another combat, and in this case I actually have my uh, four characters, which is the max amount you can have in your party at one time. Um, there are actually seven different ones, I think. At least that I've unlocked. I've only played through like half the game um, when I captured this. Um, and as you can see here, uh, you have these buttons lit up, which they weren't in the last example. So you can do normal attack, which is just one of these. Combo, which, uh, as you can see up here, there's a turn priority. So if you combo, instead of letting the enemy, who is uh, this character right here, so instead of letting the enemy take a turn, you combo, meaning you can switch to another of your characters, and they take their turn. Um, meaning that you can do it now, but um, they will sort of take the penalty later. Um, then you have double, which lets you do two actions, and double combo, which lets you do two actions and then switch to another of your characters. But I will show that. Um, so in this case, I queue up two different things. I'm just showing the different attacks here. So we have normal, which is just an attack. Hard hit, which removes um, these meters, is called the stock gauge, which allows you to do combos and doubles. And hard hit removes stock gauge from your enemy. There are attacks that do that to uh, you as well. And then you have high angle, which knocks enemies into the air, and it knocked down, I think. Yep, which knocks them down. Because uh, enemies have um, a location in the world, or whatever you want to call it, um, and they occupy, uh, they tend to occupy two, uh, as you can see here, um, they have two of these spots. So high is blank in this case, and all of my characters are mid and low. Uh, and I will show that here. So first he does Arc Barrier, which just sort of protects people. And as you can see here, um, they got 36%. If you get it in the normal orange part of the spinny thing, um, you get 30%. So the crit thingy, sure, it adds a bit, but it's not uh, super essential. Uh, oh yeah. I do first I do sort of normal attacks that boost my guess because as you can see this Mao which is the cat guy um, he um, he still has a turn before the enemy so I can do my normal turns and then combo off of the last guy um, before the enemy uh, but in this case I think um, yeah this guy starts the combo as you can see I have double combo selected here so he selects Gale Blast, um, which knocks the enemy down. As you can see here, I first knock it down and then back up again. Um, because this is a flying enemy, and now as you can see my um, my Justice Ring uh, is laid up, and then you get to do the mini game. press one of the four buttons. So I start the combo here, I knock her down, and then I use the flamethrower guitar to knock her back up again. Um, and then I get to choose between my different characters. Um, so you can build up really cool uh, combos like this, making sure that um, as you can see here, now she's up and middle, um, meaning that my 
uh, high attack will hit her. And then I can do cat touch, which is mid range. Um, and in this case, I have different um, ring speed uh, modifiers equipped on my characters. There's one that makes it go 75%, there's one that makes it go 50% slower. Um, and there might be even slower ones, I actually don't know. Uh, but yeah, so you keep doing combos and as you can see here you get bonus damage depending on the number of uh, combo hits. Um, I don't know if this is just a set number or something, but eh, you get some extra damage. Um, I couldn't actually care less if you did get extra damage or not, because I really like the combo system. And this guy has the slowest uh, line, and I still missed it. Um, but yeah, if you either fail one of these Judgment Ring uh, minigames, or if you try to attack, um, attack the enemy in a position where they aren't at the moment, like if she's flying like this and you use a, a low attack, the um, the attack uh, or the chain will break and the normal turn priority will continue. And as you can see here, the guys that have done their combos, um, the enemy will do first a double turn and then a single turn after that before they get to move again. Um, so bosses like this, where um, where you can't kill them in a turn, basically, means that um, you will tend to want to save your combo to finish them off. Because as you can see here, she has two combo meters, and if I use this attack here, she will first do a double attack and then a normal attack, which can just kill any of my characters uh, instantly. Um, and then you have your sort of combo magic, which is... Um, it's different depending on the characters you have in your party. Um, they all do different things, and until you use them once, you don't know the effect. Um, I know this is Tempest. Um, which... It's just sort of an attack, and it also removes some of, some of the enemy's stock gauge. Uh, so yeah, if you miss, the combo just breaks, and the enemy takes their turn. Um, then you have your uh, stellar magics, um, and this is sort of a system where you equip your characters with one of these. Um, there are twelve um, star star sign charts that can, in turn, equip different uh, different magics in all of their uh, points. And as you can see here, um, these are level two, meaning they can equip level two magics. Uh, so I have Rock Bump, I have Rock Burst, and a level 2 magic can go in a level 2 slot. Um, so you can also upgrade these, you can change type, uh, you can equip different ones on different characters, uh, and they all have sort of different, um, different standard nodes, as well as uh, different magic is, magics equipped. Um, uh, you can't make the actual magics that you uh, put in your slots. You will have to find them on your own. But then you can also customize the nodes. If you go to these just as guys, one of them is a vendor, the other one is a guy that can modify nodes. And as you can see here, you can switch the attribute uh, to healing uh, from healing either to fire damage or support um, or anything like that. You can change the level which means you can um, put in different nodes, like Cure is level 1, Arc Cure, which cure, cures everyone, is level 2. Uh, then you can have Effect Up, um, which just means it does more, and then MP Use, which means it's cost less mana. And these all cost different things. Um, let's see, as you can see here, level 2 is just 500, and I have 7.5. Um, effect up is a lot more expensive for just 20%. 5k is kind of a lot, but whatever. I'm just sort of showing it off here. But it's a pretty cool magic system in my opinion, because if you want to just max out one of these charts, you can then equip it on your favorite character. Or if you're in sort of a situation where you can only 
have specific characters in your party, you can just unequip it on one guy and equip it on some of the other required characters. Um, and this also means that if you want to just make one spell extremely powerful, you can. Um, for instance, I have the cure spell uh, maxed out on one of my characters, uh, because it's just so good in every situation. And mana is, it tends to be kind of difficult to come by. Um, obviously you can rest on save points, because it's eh, like Final Fantasy. Um, but otherwise you tend to not want to use your consumables a lot because you're actually kind of money starved in this game. It's hard to come by cash without just pure grinding, which you don't want to do. Um, but yeah, the next thing you can customize is actually your uh, judgment ring here. Um, you can either do stuff like added effects here, which in this case is physical defense down. You can add attacks. If you have these attack boost, um, I don't know what to call them, items I suppose, you can add more attacks. You can change your ring type from normal to um, advanced or something like that, which um, it just um, it makes the areas smaller but you do more damage. Then there is an automatic one which does less damage but um, it's easier to hit, or it hits automatically, I think, but you can never crit with it, something like that. So there, are, there are a few different ones to choose from, depending on your style of play. Um, but yeah, here there are a bunch of sort of random effects. Um, I haven't found anyone that is um, that hits every time. Um, and then you can also change these uh, as you can see here, you have a hit area expand and you have strike expand. Strike is the critical. Um, so you can also change each of these areas individually uh, to increase their size um, or to increase the strike size. I think I have one guy, Frank, here. Uh, yeah, as you can see here, he has four attacks and he also has um, these sort of bigger hit areas. So. This guy has um, sort of increased area. And it's also like this with attacks. Um, unlike the Tempest one I showed you before, um, if, you, if you hit the first three and then miss, you will still perform those three attacks. Uh, with magic, you have to hit every single one for this spell to go off. Um, but if you miss the first one when attacking or when doing magic, uh, nothing will happen. So it's only for the last one, uh, making that one less important. Um, but I've still increased it just because it's sort of easier to use. Uh, and as you can see here, I'm taking all the points out and putting them into the last one. Um, which I think is a cool system. Um, basically being able to choose your difficulty um, for each character. And Yeah, as you can see here, you can reduce the uh, number of attacks um, below your amount of um, attack boosts, meaning that that character just gets fewer attacks, but on the other hand, they, um, it becomes much easier to hit. Uh, they will also do more damage if they have fewer attacks, uh, do more damage per individual one, but the total is uh, total is lower, the lower your number of attacks is. Um, then you also have the individual skills, like Shania here. Um, she can turn into these different uh, monsters or fusions. Um, Slim Hilda, um, she's actually just called Hilda. There is a Curvy Hilda as well and a Bat Hilda. Uh, Depending on the amount of calories you've sucked out of your enemies, because she's some sort of a weird uh, vampire. Uh, as you can see here, um, in minus 89 calories you get to Slim Mask. Uh, mask is sort of a supercharged version. Um, and in plus one calorie you get to Pink Bat. 
uh, and she does different things depending on uh, her form. And as you can see, she also has the calorie drain here, which uh, allows you to switch calories. So you can basically choose the form you want to go into. Um, then you have Nathan, which is uh, Gang Fu uh, Indian. And one part of this game that I really like is the characters, because they're all really different. So you have your Shania here, which is also an Indian. Uh, she and Nathan are basically friends. Uh, hunting monsters, I suppose. You have your vampire Hilda, you have your um, guitar playing Ricardo, you have Mao the cat, you have Frank the ninja, and then you have Johnny the emo boy, which is sort of lackluster. Um, at least compared to the other ones. But he can take pictures of enemies, because all of the characters have their own sort of um, sub-quests or mini-quests. Um, so Johnny's is taking pictures of enemies and trading them with other people to get uh, items and stuff. Ricardo gets um, items to give him songs, basically. Uh, because, as you saw before, he uh, attacks with his guitar, shooting and throwing fire and whatever. Um, Frank gets these weird sort of mini quests to unlock um, ninja powers and Mao the Cat um, fights other actors on camera to, um, as you can see here, his sort of levels up um, to get more power to his cat fist. Uh, because he's obviously a drunken fighter. And then you have Frank the Ninja, which is terrible at everything. Um, he obviously fights well because he has to be balanced, but in the story version or whatever you want to call it, he's pretty bad. Um, but yeah, with Shania you also get to choose which form you want to upgrade by going into the different uh, statues and leveling, leveling them up. And the great part about this game, or another great part, is that all of your characters gain experience regardless of in the, if they're in the fight or not. Um, and Shania also gets soul energy regardless, so um, you don't have to be switching around characters constantly and grinding them to level them up because you're eventually going to need them for um, sort of a story part. You can always just use the characters you're um, most comfortable with. Unfortunately I recorded the mouse pointer here. Let's just put my other one over it. So here's the first part where you're introduced to Frank the Ninja. And I love this game because it sort of makes fun of itself. The first time Mao the cat is introduced, Johnny makes a big um, thing about, like, am I the only one in here who actually sees that it, this is a talking cat? And then after that, the game just goes along with it. And it's the same thing with Frank here. Um, the other three here just walk into the room, and Frank is casually hiding behind a flag, being pummeled by enemies. Um, so the game makes fun of itself. Unlike Final Fantasy, which has ridiculous clothing and hairstyles, and take, tries to make that a serious thing, this game just has silly enemies with arms everywhere and silly characters. And, and this is Brittany the Ninja. Um, so this is just one of these sort of small mini games that Frank does to um, level up. And I just love how how this game sort of doesn't take itself too seriously. Uh, because I think that's a problem that most games have. Um, when you can make everything, um, or at least anything you want, um, why do so many game companies make the same thing is my problem basically. Like Final Fantasy for instance, which tends to try and make the same thing over and over again forever. Um, I still like them. Uh, don't get me wrong, Final Fantasy VI was um, it's probably in my top five best games of all time. Um, I just have a hard time with the newer ones. But yeah, let's get back to Shadow Hearts. Um, so this is sort of one of the mini games, and I think it's pretty much impossible, but you can try it over and over again as many times as you want, and you have a 25% chance each time. So um, Unfortunately, I'm running this on an emulator because I have no way of recording from my PS2. 
so I'm sort of being a bad person in that way. But at least I own the game and I own the pizza too. So um, here is just one way to show um, the story, which is actually kind of epic, um, but it's also very very silly. Um, so in this game, this is Al Capone, um, and this guy is Al Capone's sister's lover or something, and she's being taken over by uh, malice, which is basically evil, uh, all weird types of evil. Um, and these are competing weird mobsters. Um, I'll just skip ahead here for a bit because the game gets uh, it's sort of slow. There are a bunch of different uh, cutscenes and sometimes you get to skip like four or five in a row but uh, I just do that because I pretty much know what happens. But yeah this is supposed to be really emotional uh, and she gets taken over by evil and wants the bunch of friends to kill her. So the the story it's sort of the basic boy saves world thingy. Um, so it just lets the game go along. But the characters and the gameplay is just so amazing um, that I really wanted them to make more of these. Um, I think it's a shame that there aren't more of them but what can you do? Except I suppose take your influence from them and then try and build upon that to make other games that are as fantastic. And uh, yeah, Mr. Badass fights the evil version of Al Capone's sister. And then we're back to the combat part that I showed before. Um, the game is also sort of weird in that it seems to cater to uh, teenage boys because it has a lot of weird boob shots like all of the transformations which unfortunately you can't skip um, and they're mostly about taking clothes off and focusing on boobs and ass but I suppose this game had to have some sort of flaw and in this case this is pretty much it um, because in each or in every other way this game is uh, on my recommended list um, even if you're not a super fan of the JRPG genre, which I suppose this game falls into, even though it's not from Japan, I don't think. Um, I would recommend this to a lot of different people, just because of how tight the game mechanics are. So this has been Jonas making a video on Shadow Hearts from the New World, and if you reached the end, thanks for watching.